the previous class we learnt about the various methods of excavation and then we started our discussion on various support system and I mentioned to you about uh, the shortcrete rock bowls and grouting through rocks and uh, then we started elaborate discussion on uh, shortcrete and we were discussing the mixed design criteria for shortcrete. So, to continue with that uh, discussion. Uh, today we will learn about uh, few aspects related to shortcrete, a special focus on admixtures and then we will see that in what all applications uh, this shortcrete uh, can be sprayed or applied. So, as far as the mixed design criteria is uh, concerned, uh, the shootability is uh, an important aspect. Uh, with the minimum rebound from the rock surface. If the rebound is more, we will have more loss of the material and less effectiveness of the shortcrete layer. So, therefore, the rebound should be minimum. The early strength is also needed. So, it should be strong enough to provide the rock mass support at an age of uh, 4 to 8 hours. As far as the long term strength is uh, concerned, it should be achieved uh, 28 days uh, strength with the doses of uh, accelerators which are needed to achieve the shootability and the early strength. The durability it deals with the long term resistance uh, to the environment, economy there should be low cost of materials and minimum losses are due to rebound. So, all these factors such as shootability, early strength, long term strength, durability and economy one should keep in mind when you go for the design of the mix for the shortcrete. Coming to the admixtures or additives, let us try to learn these in detail that whether they are helpful or any particular type of admixture, it uh, has some advantage or disadvantages. Let us take a look. So, as far as the dry mix shortcrete is concerned, the action of additives is uh, mainly the physical one. Uh, so, in case of the micro silica, which we also call as silica fumes, if we use these, these help in improving the bonding and the quality of spread concrete. This results in the enhanced density and the compressive strength of the shortcrete layer and also reduces the rebound as high as up to 50 percent. For wet mix shortcrete, the water is added in the controlled conditions. So, the admixtures uh, which are used uh, there are few uh, in the list. So, the first one is the plasticizers or super plasticizers. These are the combination of lignosulfonate, naphthalene and melamine. Naphthalene and melamine they are chemically distinct from the lignosulfonate. Uh, which is the plasticizers water reducers. Melamine what it does it, it's, it forms a lubricating film on the particle surface and naphthalene electrically charges the cement particles so that they repel each other. So, what happens uh, in that case uh, may be the uh, when uh, these are well dispersed the cement particles uh, they do not only flow around each other more easily, but also coat the aggregates more completely. The presence of the lignosulfate it reduces the water surface tension and therefore, this particular phenomena happens. The net result of adding these plasticizers or super plasticizers is the concrete which is more stronger and workable. Second category is glenium. These are also called as high performance 
hyper plasticizers which are based on a modified polycarboxylic ether which has the capability to provide a very high water reduction and excellent workability retention. These coat the aggregates more completely as compared to the plasticizers or super plasticizers. What are the benefits of uh, glenium? Some of these include that uh, uh, these are extremely high water reduction, I mean it is uh, to the tune of more than 40 percent. If you use these, it results into low capillary porosity. They have long extended workability with the lowest possible water cement ratio. They are highly cohesive. So, the cohesiveness is very high and it results into the uh, easy pumpability. And uh, uh, there is uh, the rapid strength development with the use of glenium. These are already widely used in combination with alkali free accelerators. Uh, these represent the future of uh, sprayed concrete admixtures. So, basically these days uh, it is uh, used quite often. The third category is uh, the modified sodium silicates. These binds the water in the mix. Therefore, the dosage depends on the water cement ratio. Higher the water cement ratio, more modified sodium silicate is required in order to glue the water and the mix. So, keep this in mind that if we have the higher water cement ratio, more modified sodium silicate would be required. Now, modified sodium silicates these do not give very high strength within the first 2 to 4 hours and their normal uh, final setting time is uh, like more than uh, 30 minutes. Uh, again that also depends upon the type of the cement which is being used and also the temperature. Advantages of uh, modified uh, sodium silicates, uh, these include that uh, it works well with almost all types of uh, cement. There is less reduction in the final strength than with respect to aluminate based accelerators at normal dosage which are 4 to 6 percent by weight. So, the next one that we will take is the aluminate based uh, accelerators. So, I am just right now uh, comparing the aluminate based accelerators with those of the uh, sodium uh, silicates. So, here there is a less decrease in the final strength as compared to aluminate based accelerators at normal dosage. Uh, these have very good gluing effect. Further, these are environmental friendly and they are not very aggressive uh, for uh, skin, human skin. Their pH is less than 11.5, but still the direct skin contact should be avoided and uh, uh, the use of gloves and goggles uh, is always recommended. When uh, uh, such type of admixtures, they are used in the short treat. So, they have much lower alkali content as compared to the aluminate based uh, products that is it is having uh, less than 8.5 percent of Na2O. Uh, the dosage is uh, the for the modified sodium silicates it is uh, 3 to 6 percent by weight. Please remember these things because it is extremely important 3 to 6 percent by weight. Uh, of the modified sodium silicates is recommended uh, to be added to the short grid to uh, arrive at or to derive the maximum advantage of the uh, modi modified sodium silicates. 
then coming to the next category which is the aluminate accelerators. So, the aluminate based accelerators these are preferably used in uh, the soft rock with heavy rock deformations and where high early strength support is needed and uh, the large thicknesses uh, which is more than one, uh, 150 millimeter. Uh, or 15 centimeter is required within the short span of time after the excavation. So, these start to develop strength uh, after 5 to 10 minutes of their application on the rock mass surface and after about 20 to 30 minutes the strength is reasonably high enough uh, to the tune of uh, maybe more than 0.4 mega Pascal that the sprayed concrete layer is strong enough to bear its own weight. So, these are some of the significant features of aluminate accelerators. And uh, because these have uh, these special properties and therefore, uh, one can go for the spray of uh, thicker layers. Uh, as compared to the case of modified uh, sodium silicate or the water glass. So, here in this case the typical thicknesses can vary from uh, 20 to 50 centimeter or 200 to 500 millimeter overhead. So, here in case if the requirement of the support system is that you need larger thickness of the short creed, then uh, rather than going for the modified sodium silicate, one should go for aluminate based accelerators. These are also suitable where uh, there are uh, water problems. The normal spraying procedure with uh, water problems uh, is to put up a very thin layer of sprayed concrete with an overdose of aluminate accelerator which is uh, can, which can be uh, 8 to 10 percent by weight and then to wait for about 30 minutes until uh, this uh, thin layer has developed sufficient strength to bear the water pressure. And then maybe the spray, uh, spraying can be continued until the required thickness is achieved. So, basically wherever you have the water problem, so first you apply a very thin layer of sprayed concrete with an overdose of aluminate accelerator because it sets uh, quickly. So, then you can wait for uh, 30 minutes uh, so that this layer develops uh, sufficient strength and then maybe the spraying can be continued until the required uh, thickness which has been designed earlier is arrived at. There are some disadvantages which are associated uh, with aluminate based uh, set accelerators. Uh, these include that uh, there is a higher reduction in the final strength as compared to with the modified sodium silicate I mean and then this uh, reduction is uh, more than 30 to 50 percent which is very large. So, you need to be careful. These are very sensitive to the type of the cement that uh, you are using to prepare the shortcrete as these will not work with every type of uh, cement which was not the case for uh, the um, modified sodium silicates. The reactivity of the cement should be tested before the spraying is uh, started. So, we have to be careful uh, while we use the aluminate based set accelerator in view of this aspect. These have very high pH uh, maybe to the tune of more than 13 and hence uh, these may be aggressive to skin and eyes. So, as against the modified sodium silicates where pH was of the order of 11 or so here it is uh, much larger more than 13. So, one needs to be careful as uh, these are aggressive to skin and eyes. Typical dosage is uh, 4 to 8 percent by weight for uh, the aluminate based set accelerators. There are two types of uh, aluminate accelerators. One is uh, sodium aluminate, another one is the potassium aluminate. Uh, 
uh, this potassium aluminate it uh, work with the larger variety of the cement types and normally gives a uh, faster settling and uh, higher early strength as compared to sodium aluminate based accelerators. So, when we compare sodium aluminate and the potassium aluminate, a potassium aluminate has the advantage in view of these points. Now, as far as the fields of application of uh, shotcrete is concerned, uh, these can be used for the permanent support and also for the temporary support where uh, uh, you do not need to have the early strength or maybe uh, in the case of hard rock conditions. Sometimes these are used for the repair work and uh, the application of the shotcrete layer is limited to the places where uh, the maximum thickness uh, is limited to 10 to 15 centimeter that means uh, 100 to 150 uh, millimeter. So, in case if uh, the requirement is more than this then maybe you need to go for the combination of uh, steel sets or and the shotcrete or rock bolt and the shotcrete. So, this is all about the shotcrete support system. We have uh, the other type of the support systems such as rock bolts plus uh, the rock mass can also be improved with the help of uh, grouting. So, we will take up uh, the concepts related to rock bowls such as uh, what all are their types, what are their advantages, disadvantages, in what situation that uh, these can be used in the next class. Thank you very much.